experience. Showing my day, Joe Rogan podcast, my day. Good to see you. Good to be back. We had a full Texas day today. Dude. Yeah. Full like Texas. It doesn't get more Texas than that. Shotguns, yep. ate barbecue, went to the Staccato Range. How sick is that place? Man, dude, you should have, like, I remember when I first went there. Like, I called it the ghetto because that's what it was. It, like, there was nothing there. Just dirt. Just dirt. And, like, they had some they had some bays and stuff like that, too. Um, and, we, you know, me and my videographer, we did some shooting out there. And we fit. In 300 meters, turn right onto Torstrasse. But it was, like... Nothing like it is now. Now yeah. it looks like an entire little village. They're dumping of guns. a ton of money to that place, dude. Like, yeah. like when we were going around, he was showing us like the whole property. I was like, I don't know if you saw my face. I was like, what the? Fuck? I know. Cause, uh, it must be a lot of money and some really good guns. Yeah. Turn right onto Torstrasse. Yeah, to say the least. Cause I uh, like the lake. Like you guys have a lake. Like, <laughs> Why'd you build a lake? It's like we're gonna have a lake. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, 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 I. Something about water. Like if I ever bought like property, like if I just get over this hole, like I have to be in the city. Shit. Head east on Torstrasse towards Schönhauser Alley. And have my property. I'd want some like body. Turn left onto Torstrasse. Explain to me the I have to be in the city. I'm just the city rat. Head south on Rosa Luxemburg Strasse towards Armstadtstrasse. In 200 like I, I you like, always like it. The, the, yeah, just the buzz and the energy of the city is something that I just, it's in me. Turn left onto Hurton Trass, then turn right onto Carl Liebknecht Strass. It's like, like I can still, like every year, you know, I'll go out to like Utah and go, go and do all of the, you know, eat, love, pray shit. And then <laughs> well, he does that I got to I, I, yeah, I, I gotta come back to the streets. Yeah, That's crazy. Yeah. I like staying in cities. Like yeah. when I stay in New York City, mm -hmm. I'm there for a weekend. But by the time Sunday rolls around, I'm like, all right, get me the fuck out. Turn right onto Carl Liebknecht Strass. Yeah. I don't like it. I've never liked it. Even when I lived in New York, I didn't live in the city. I really? lived in the suburbs. Uh, I lived, but that was because I couldn't afford it. I couldn't afford an apartment gotcha. that had uh, parking. <laughs> it's parking in New York City. Oh, yeah, you're right. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have to do the road. I travel out to do stand -up. Continue for three kilometers. Be able to drive to gigs. So I was driving in Connecticut and Jersey and... Just to get a parking spot, I forget how much it cost back then. This is the '90s, but it was it was out of my budget. I'm honestly like I love cities, so anytime I go to a city, if I travel to a different to a state that I've never been to before, I always want to stay in the city and I always go to their downtowns. New York is one of the places that I genuinely do not like. In really? Of, no, I don't know what it is. I, I genuinely did not like it, which is weird because I like big cities, but for something about New York, I was just kind of like, meh. Really? I don't, dude. That I, doesn't make any sense because it's the most know, city city. I, I, I wish I could articulate just a it. feeling yeah. is not interesting. Mm -hmm. And so, it wasn't even like during a weird time. Like I didn't go like during COVID or anything like that. It was it was pretty normal time. During COVID, they made some weird law in New York City where you're allowed to eat outside. Mm -hmm. So they built indoor places outside. So they basically <laughs> built like these like, there, there were like little trailers that they set up outside and they put, you know, dining tables in, nice lighting and shit. Yeah, New York City drivers will have to pay $15 to ride through Manhattan. Yeah. I did not know that. You have to pay money to drive through the city. Well, oh, first oh, this is new. Yeah. yeah. Oh. They're out of money. Yeah, well, yeah, this is what happens when you make stupid politics decisions. Yeah, you make terrible yeah. policy decisions and you say that you're a sanctuary city, and then Texas goes, okay, great. And they just look at it. It's kind of a gangster move by Abbott. I mean... It's pretty gangster. If you're dealing with the border, and the border is where you are, mm -hmm. and everyone's like, we are a sanctuary. Yeah, like, oh, are you? Yeah, right. Wonderful. Yeah. I got an idea. <laughs> what, is, what is going on? Do you Have you been paying attention to this standoff between Texas and the Biden administration in terms of the border? Like, Texas is put up barbed wire and the Biden administration wants the barbed wire taken down. I, I, I'll be honest and tell you, I haven't been following you super close, which is odd because I'm Texas born and raised. And the weird thing is, is living in Dallas, you're, st you're almost still kind of disconnected from what's going on at the border a little right. bit because you're so far north. Right. But even in Houston, because you know I'm in Houston a lot too, um, it's not something that you're confronted with daily. But, but, anybody from Texas usually at some point in time some, at some point in time. <laughs> what, what was that? Checking a video. Oh. At some point 
time you're gonna go you're gonna go towards the border and, yeah and you're, and you're gonna see it for yourself um but what i do know of it i mean at this point we, i mean we're trying not to lose control of it essentially from what i can gather what is happening i don't know whose ideas in terms of what who's letting this happen like who's it seems very organized these people know the border's open so they know they can just walk through i think i think there is there's a lot of virtue signaling i think involved and all of the whole, like, like you're talking about with New York saying, you know, we're, yeah. we're a sanctuary city. Just, yes, we accept everyone to come in, just not our state <laughs> in our city. Right. Right. Um, and so I think you have that combined with the reality of what happens when you have a border that honestly is not being checked. Right. So if you if you have if you have a situation where you have people who are able to just come in and leave as they I wouldn't say necessarily necessarily say leave, but coming into a state and it's a choke point because yeah. a lot of it is coming in through Texas. So, you know, it's easy to have that philosophy of, oh, you know, leave the border, don't don't make the border, get rid of the barbed wire, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because we want to seem as if we are welcoming to everyone. And I don't think it's a matter of not w- wanting to be welcoming. I think it has a lot to do with the same reason why you have a front door with locks on it on your house. Yeah. Right? Um, at least have a checkpoint to say, okay, well, if you want to come in, I need to know who I'm dealing with. Well, did you see they had this one guy that was on video that um, he said, you will see who I am yeah. soon, and then they found out he's on, like, some terrorist watch list yeah. or something like that? Yeah. I, it's, oh, terrific. But that doesn't surprise me, though. Well, it doesn't surprise me either, but it seems too convenient that it's happening with the numbers that it's happening at. It seems organized, and I would like to know, like, how is it getting to those people? Is anyone supplying them with resources? Is anyone telling them how to do it? Is this organized? I think it is. I Do I have any proof or data to back it up? No, it's a hunch. Yeah. Um, just because it just it just doesn't really make sense. I don't think anybody who's honestly being, on, like, being honest with themselves you're not going to be someone who says, you know what, I just want an open border where any and everyone can come in at will without anybody checking who's actually coming into the country. No, it's insane. It, it makes no sense. It's insane. That it's not the case if you fly in, which yeah. is nuts. <laughs> so if like, you're coming from some country and you, uh, you know, if you want to emigrate to the United States, it's hard. Yeah. Like, yeah. you have to prove that you have some sort of uh, exceptional skill. Yeah. There's some reason for you to be here. And you, you have to you get a work visa. Yep. You have to apply for citizenship. I mean, let's just keep it real. Like, there are a lot of people who just don't like this country. Yeah. And they would love to get into the country and cause damage to the country any way they can. Yes. Um, so I, I think for anyone to say that they don't, that they are for open borders. The, at least uh, there's got to be a percentage of the people that are coming across that we don't want here. There has to be. I mean, that's just, that's just reality. Just reality. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as much as you want to be a kind person, look, I am the, the grandchild of immigrants. None of my family came from America. They all came from Italy and Ireland. They all came over here. My parents are immigrants. Yeah. <laughs> so it's so, like, we're not anti-immigration. Yeah. But it just seems like, God damn, you got to make sure you're not letting terrorists in. It seems so simple. Yeah. But, like I said, I think a lot of it has to do, I think there's some grandstanding and there's some virtue signaling going on as well. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think... I think the administration honestly is trying to trying to walk that walk that line of no, we're so progressive, and you know, then, while at the same time, honestly trying to stick it to Texas. Yeah, and I think I think I mean we're, this is a it's a it's a dick swinging competition at this point. Why would you have a dick swinging competition about the border? That seems so insane that you would want people to take down a barrier to entry. You know what I think? What I think it has a lot to do with Trump, because you know when he was running his campaign. He was running a lot of it based on the idea he was going to build a wall on the border. Yeah. And so that became that became a, a separation point for a lot of people in the country with respect to what side they fell on. And I think there's a, there's a particular party in this country that utilized it as a, as a lightning rod to create that level of division. And so I think they're kind of trying to reestablish that again. Which is one of the things that's even more gangster about... <laughs> Abbott sending yeah. people to Chicago, sending people to New York. Because in Chicago, they're like, it's get like, these fucking people, people out, out of here. here right? And the people that live in Chicago, the poor people of Chicago, are like, this is bullshit. Yeah. These people are getting money. They're getting they they're getting all this help. They're getting food. They're getting all this stuff that we don't have. Oh, yeah, people, people literally in the place who live there their whole lives, yeah. and then all of a sudden these people sneak in, and yeah. they're getting this special treatment. I think there's also a level of of hey Germany. So, 2024 is going to be your year, huh? 
the year you finally start exercising, stop eating junk food, stop looking at porn. Well, you might be able to fool your friends, but you definitely can't fool your internet. In 200 meters, turn right onto Bundestrasse 5, B2. Provider, they can see all your naughty late night searches. In fact, they've got a naughty list on all of us about a mile long, except for me, of course, because I... Turn right onto Bundestrasse 5, B2, then turn left to stay on Bundestrasse 5. Use ExpressVPN. Most people don't realize this, but private mode doesn't keep your activity private. Your internet provider can see all the websites that you've ever clicked on. And you know who else can see everything? Whoever owns the Wi-Fi that you are using, like your boss, your school, or even your parents. But because I use ExpressVPN... Turn left to stay on Bundestrasse 5, B2. And all my traffic rerouted through an encrypted server, so all my browsing activity stays between me and my god. ExpressVPN's app works on all of my devices, so whether I'm on my phone, my tablet, laptop, whatever, I'm always protected. And best of all, ExpressVPN is super easy to use. All you have to do is... In 200 meters, turn left to stay on Bundestrasse 5, B2. Tap one button to turn it on, and you are protected. So, give yourself the gift of privacy with my personal favorite VPN. Visit expressvpn.com slash... Turn left to stay on Bundestrasse 5, B2, then turn right to stay on Bundestrasse 5. Broken and get three extra months for free. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S VPN dot com slash R-O-G-A-N Express VPN dot com slash Rogan. Trying to pass the buck a little bit or, or kind of a mass distraction because when you look at any, when you look at these major cities and you see the conditions that a lot of these people are living in in our own country, right? You start to ask yourself, okay, well, why are, they, why are these conditions? Why do they exist, right? Um, and there are very particularized areas in very particular places within this country. So it begs the question: It's like, what, why can't we fix this issue? Right, right. Like they're talking about how we want to help these people. They're they want to come into the country because they're running away from a shitty life and in, the t- in terrible environments. I mean, you mean the ones that are synonymous, the ones that we actually have in the country as well, but yet we haven't been able to address that issue. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, but I, I think it's a way to kind of push that to the side and, and sweep it under the rug and say no. Turn right to stay on Bundestrasse 5, B2. It, this is, it's a sexier problem to have when we're trying to deal with people coming from other countries. Right. And we want to help them because we're so noble and so brave. But I'm like, you haven't even taken care of what's going on in your own home. And part of the reason why the place they are at sucks, yeah. well, the reason why they come over here, is because of what we're doing with those countries. <laughs> they know that. Yeah, there's part of that, too. I mean, it's part of, like... When we shipped all those fucking jobs overseas, these people are making pennies on the yeah. dollar to make goods that we can buy here slightly cheaper. Yeah. I mean, it destroyed unions, and destroyed American manufacturing. And, you know, I... Continue on B2 for one and a half kilometers. Go so far as to say a little bit is... A little, a little bit of that is our fault as well as consumers. Because when you do try to make stuff in America, right? Yeah. They're going to be more expensive. Yeah, you know what I mean? And so and a lot of people aren't willing to pay that price hike in order to have stuff produced in America. So you, they basically, companies become incentivized to then go and have these things created elsewhere because I've seen companies where they struggle because they're trying to make everything in America, right. but that but that comes with the price that yeah. a lot of people aren't willing to pay. Right. And so I, I wonder how much, you know, it's kind of like with climate change. It's like how much of that is affecting are a lot of the manufacturing and so forth going overseas? Some of it is, but there's enough people that want to buy American-made products from people that get paid a fair wage that if you advertise that lot, and make that a, a lot of people say they do. Well, a lot of people do. Look at Origin. Yeah. yeah. Origin can't keep clothes on the shelves. Everything's fair. flying off the, their boots, their clothes, their hunting gear. They can barely keep them in stock. Everybody wants it because it's 100% American. Do you think that's Everybody. the only reason why? What do you think it is? I don't know. I'm not, familiar, I'm, not, I'm not that familiar with Origin, honestly. Well, so. Origin is my friend Jocko's company, and I'm a part of it. And I know that what they're doing is very popular. Gotcha. And it's very popular because 
that's part of their mission statement. Bring back American manufacturing. You know, put take pride in the fact that these these things that you're wearing, these things you purchase, these things you use every day, is 100% American made. Everything down to the buttons, the yeah. threads, everything put together, all the cloth, everything sourced from America. 100%. 100%. 100%. It's actually pretty damn yeah. impressive. Pretty damn impressive. <laughs> the only thing they don't have from America, there's a part of a boot that you can only get in South America. Gotcha. So even that's America. It's just yeah. South America, but not the United States. But that's one piece, and they eventually are planning on figuring out a way to manufacture that. Is that, is that where the name comes from, Morton? I don't know. In 300 meters, at Grosser Stern, take the third exit and stay on Bundesstrasse 5, B2. It does fit. Yeah. yeah, it does fit. I don't know the origin of the name. <laughs> but, but I feel like if you had an American made cell phone, I've been saying this forever. Yeah. Give me a fucking iPhone that's made by people that aren't working for slave wages. Give me an iPhone that's not made in a factory where people have nets around the building to keep people from jumping off the roofs because they hate their lives. Yeah. Give me a fact. Give me a phone that is not that you didn't get sourced the materials by slave labor in the Congo. Can you fucking do that? Is it possible to do that? Because if it is, what? How much more is it? Is it three hundred dollars more? I'll pay three hundred dollars more for a phone that I know I don't have to feel like shit about. I beg the question though. You know, you and I, yeah, I would do it. I think enough people yeah, would, but I have the monetary ability to do it. I wonder. Yes. I wonder how much of, you know. The people who can't, who aren't necessarily in the economic position to pay, like to them, that's 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 a considerable markup, right? Yeah. Um, I wonder how much of that. I don't know. I wonder how much of that plays into a part of, you know, facilitating this kind of shipping or manufacturing and everything overseas because they can build things cheaper and then people continue to buy it. So maybe I I take a step back and I say, all right, maybe it's not just a, oh yeah, they say they want American people are willing to pay for it. Maybe some people, maybe a large part of people just can't. I don't know large percentage of people probably can't. The people that are living check to check can't. But there's enough people that are not living check to check that would feel better about buying something. And maybe instead of buying an iPhone, every... Exit the roundabout onto Bundesstrasse 5. A cell phone every year. <laughs> Buy one every other year, or every two years. Continue on B2 for one and a half kilometers. Three years. Like, well, it's... Yeah. It's feasible. It, it makes sense. Feasible. Now, granted, I'm guilty. I got a fucking iPhone 11. I keep one of my phones is an iPhone 11. Uh -huh. The motherfucker works perfect. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm literally the person you're talking about. I upgrade my phone on the day the new one comes Me out. Me too. To the minute. I <laughs> got 15. Have no yeah. reason to have this fucking phone. Yeah. Now, no gra reason. Now, granted, I live and die by my, like, this is... These phones yeah. do everything for me now. Yeah, me too. I have reached a point now where I'm kind of like, I don't want to upgrade, but for no other reason than I don't want to have to go through the, like, update process. Like, changing, like, the changeover process is right. really annoying. It is uh, weird. It's, yeah. Sometimes, like, uh, phone numbers get all fucked up. Yeah. Something happened <laughs> where phone numbers got attached in iMessage to old emails of yes. other people. Yeah, it's, it, I've had some really spooky stuff happen on my phones. And I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Like, yeah. I had a friend tell me, he was like, he's like, I called you and somebody else picked up. Yeah, I had that yeah, okay, too. okay, yeah. yeah. I go, dude, like, is this your phone number? Yeah. Goes, yeah, I go, bro, a woman answers the phone. That's exactly what happened yeah. to me. Yeah. What's that? I have no idea. Yeah. I'm not, I'm maybe, I mean, I have. I don't I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, we are talking about devices, right, that are essentially supercomputers in our hands. Yeah. So maybe it's just the fault of the system that, that just, it's bound to happen where you yeah. get this kind of cross communication and it just can't keep up with it. Um, I forgot who the comedian was. Uh, and, you know, he's talking about how impatient we are these days because it was one of my favorite bits because it's so true. He's like, we get these cell phones and then the moment it stops working a little bit, we get pissed off and it's like, it's sending message to fucking space. Oh, that's Louis C.K. Louis C.K., yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I was like, yeah, it's a very poignant point. <laughs> it's a very so, good point. And it, yeah, I mean, it's easy to get annoyed at technology when it doesn't suit your needs, but it's just... You connect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the TRX. Yeah, my TRX has this uh, system. This, I love the, the truck. It's awesome. It's amazing. But that system is whack. You have one too, right? Yeah. I, you connect is whack. I did a whole I did a whole video on Instagram about it. I literally, I, I, it's the worst infotainment system I've ever experienced in a vehicle. It sometimes it's, just doesn't connect to it's, CarPlay. It's possessed. Yeah. It, I've literally driven 15 minutes 
and it has connected and disconnected oh, yeah. five times. Oh, yeah. I'm like, this is... It, it, and then I step on the gas and I hear that, that whine. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 I don't forget about it. It's uh, mine's at Hennessy right now. Yeah. They've replaced the screen or something. <laughs> something is wrong with the screen. It just shut off. I want to take my name. So. I haven't done it yet. Yeah, That's I, ridiculous. I want to get the unnecessary 1,000 1, horsepower. horsepower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the one that comes out of the factory is 700. Yeah, no, it's wrong. That's it? dumb. It's not, but I mean, yeah, America, right? <laughs> America. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're making, you know, the Dodge Demon is 1,000 horsepower. Mm -hmm. The new one. They're making a 1,700 horsepower Dodge Demon. That's the 
the next one? Oh, yeah, oh it's fully electric. It's after the RV. Next. I don't know about this whole fully electric shit. Yeah. Now, uh, you know what? I'm full of shit. Because there is one car I drove that I was like, I actually want this. What's that? The Taycan. Oh, yeah. A uh, Taycan. I was like, okay. All right. That's amazing. Uh, that, that I can... Because it gave me... It was still lacking on the the sound aspect however what it did do it still gave me all of the driving dynamics that you were used to with porsche yes you get what i'm saying and the interior and exactly yes yeah. the um, driving dynamics are i've driven it's, one. it's amazing it's amazing amazing like i literally like my blood pressure just dropped the moment yeah. i got in the car look at that thing i mean they, yeah. they just know how to do they interiors do, they, they know do. how to do ergonomics yep without and, without being overboard and you can also get the jetson sound you know that what is the mission e is that the two-door one? Oh, shit. Oh. Got, that looks like a four-door to me. Wait, what was that? Maybe that I was think the they're concept. Coming out with a two was that the concept for the, the original Taycan? I believe they're coming out with a two-door Taycan. Uh, okay. But the sound, you can get Jetson sounds. <laughs> so when you hit the gas, the one I was in, is like... I don't like that. Yeah, you say that to you try. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I like my car sound like they're farting everywhere they go. Electric sports sound off. Yeah, so it just takes off silently and then sound on. Come on, man. That right, sounds right, amazing. All right, all right. See, the sound you made yeah. and then that sound right. are two different things. Right, right. <laughs> right. That's my fault. <laughs> Come on, that sounds insane. That sounds like you're in a goddamn spaceship. It's a different kind of yeah. sound. But even like the Porsche Turbo doesn't have the best sound. It doesn't, because I daily drive one, and I love it. It's I, so crazy fast. I, I even I got rid of the GT3 to get it, which is sacrilegious. The difference in sound. Yeah, yeah because that, the way that GT3 wails, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's awe-inspired. Yeah, <laughs> like, it is. Like, it's part of the fun. Um, and, but, the turp, but nothing can be, I think, and I'm gonna do a video on this when I start my second second um youtube channel i think the porsche turbo s is the greatest daily driving supercar on the planet ever created and they have that marriage with volkswagen yes which is also so kind, kind of kind similar. similar in 300 meters use the left lane to turn left onto Mesadon. Uh, yeah but, but porsche has always, always been, been yeah, yeah. They, they've always been porsche they've, they've done, always been reliable yeah. yeah in terms of like supercars they're like the most reliable yeah. the most far. boring supercars but the greatest. Well, not the GT3 or the GT3 Okay, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not factoring in those. Yeah. those. I look at those more like track weapons. Yeah, but they're still willing to make a six-speed GT. Use the left lane to turn left onto Mesodon, then use the left lane to take the A100 slip road. And then the GT, the ST, which is the yeah. like the new one that's six-speed as well. I like the Sports Classic. Yeah. The sports it's Classic, nice too. Yeah, yeah with the six-speed six speed yeah. with, uh, with the ducktail. They're still willing to make some driver-centric cars, and there's a giant market for them, like that GT3 Touring. Better route of eight. Head west on Bundesstrasse 5, B2 towards Königin Elisabethstrasse, then use the left lane to turn left onto Messerdam. That's stock. Yeah. Even though I think the GT3 Touring is kind of, I, I, maybe because I'm, I like I like the wing of the original GT3, mm -hmm. so I, the last thing I want is one without the wing. I'm like, if I'm gonna do it without the wing, just give me a turbo. I'm spoken like a true Lamborghini driver. I mean, for... use the left lane to turn left onto Mesodon, then use the left lane to take the A100 slip road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of cars that just don't get their their deserve what they deserve, you know. Yeah, I mean, I went down a rabbit hole last night. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll, that's yeah. amazing. I, I went down a rabbit hole last night with the uh, Lexus LC500. Uh, see, you say that, I hear LFA. LFA is amazing. Yeah. But there's people are doing wild shit with the LC500 where they're putting wide body kits on mm -hmm. and straight pipes, and they sound insane. Well, I think it's because of the LFA. Mm -hmm. Because I think I think once the LFA didn't do as well as they expected it to do. Yeah. Because again, I think they just overpriced it. Because the the, the market just yeah. wasn't ready for. A fucking what was it like two hundred thousand dollar like like three hundred? Well, now it is. Yeah. Because now it's like. But I think even out of the box, I think it was three. Oh, it was like three. Yeah. yeah. See, and that for for Lexus, that's still pushing it. Like, that's the thing. It's yeah. a label thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Like if you want to pull up in a three hundred thousand dollar car, it's gonna be a Ferrari. Exactly. It's exactly. how they it's how they got away with selling the Urus. Yeah. The, the, the Urus. 
Look at that motherfucker. Okay, that's that almost looks like an A12. Look at that fucking thing. That's yeah, with a wide body kit on yeah, it. That's, that's amazing. That is pretty badass. Yeah, but you can only get that up to like 550. Use the left lane to take the A100 slip road. Or with a lot of modification. Are they are they turbo? No, it's a V8. In 300 meters, merge onto Bundesautobahn 100. Sounds incredible. Natural effort? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, it sounds incredible. And the interior, the, the interior is insane. Lexus has always done interior. See if you can find a video of one with a wide body, because there's some awesome. Merge onto Bundesautobahn 100, then take the A115 exit. Dose of them. Because they, there's a lot of people doing these now. Because they've been out for like what, like six, seven years now. Yeah. There's a lot of people doing yeah. wide body I kits with them. That's kind of a nasty setup. That's a nasty looking car, man. Yeah. But with the wide body setup, you know, you're getting a wider stance, you're getting yeah. wider fat tires. I'm not a fan of the wing. Take the A115 exit. So uh, wings yeah, work polarizing. I think wings are 50 50. They either work or they don't. I think it looks great on black. Continue for 10 kilometers. Yes, I think if you get it on the white car, it looks a little silly. Head south on Bundesautobahn 100. Just join it. In 500 meters, take exit 12 Kurfürstendamm towards Kurfürstendamm. The one that was matte black with a wing, and it looked fucking insane with the wide body kit. And then he had it set up with um, a remote control for the pipes, so you could have it even more silent stock you could have it like a stock where you'd have straight pipes um, yeah i've never take exit 12 curves and down then merge onto harlan's age trusser er, put i've never done aftermarket exhaust on any car i've ever owned really no i never get to it because all that have like i'm a car whore so so you swap them in 300 meters use the left lane to turn left to stay on harlan's age trusser by the time, but the thing is, I do a bunch of other stuff, right? Like, I'll tune them, I'll wrap them, I'll put all types of security features, I'll put that, you know, all that crap, the mm -hmm. radar detectors, blockers, all that nonsense. But then when it's time to get ready to do the aftermarket exhaust. Use the left lane to turn left to stay on Harlan's H trasser. Yeah, I'm like, ooh, what's that? <laughs> There's <laughs> like, some California fucking politician that was just trying to pass a bill to make it so you can't go more than 10 miles an hour over the speed limit in a car. Yeah, he should be fired. He's also one of the same guy. In 300 meters, use the left lane to take the A100 slip road to Flurkif and Tegel, Hamburg. That was a part of, there was this very controversial LBG, this guy. Is this it? California bill calls for tech to make new cars unable to speed. Now, who is the guy? Who is the 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 the, the guy who's at the head of it? Yes, he, you know, he was so, be called that. He, but this guy is also the same guy that was pushing for some very controversial law. Use the left lane to take the A100 slip road, then take exit 10. The di so there's a difference between what they're trying to. They're, yeah, Scott Weiner. He's he's kind of a freak. <laughs> Scott Weiner's kind of a freak. Like his pictures of him like a dog okay. going on the name of the oh, game. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Exactly. Yeah, that guy. So that guy was also a part of some very. Take exit ten. Yeah, he looks like a skinnier like version of Jerry. Yeah. Subway. So he's got like a leather vest on with a with a, a tie with no shirt at the game. Continue for 10 kilometers. Just, you know, have a good time. Head north on Harlan's H Trasse towards Am West Kreutz. In 600...
der Kernstraße. Have a good time. But, the, but you're pushing it with this over 10. But he was a part of some very, it, it was a very controversial bill that people were co trying to misinterpret. But it was, it was about age of consent. Mm -hmm. And they were saying that age of consent, that there was some part about the way the law was structured that was discriminating against LBGT people. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, what are you trying to say? So now, like, apparently there's some discretion with age gaps. In 500 meters, turn right onto the A115 slip road to Magdeburg, Leipzig. Comes to heterosexual couples. So, so like, say if, like, a girl is 16 in California, she'd be underage, and a boy's 18. Well, what if they start dating when the boy was 17, the girl was 15, and the guy turns 18? It's technically illegal. Yeah. So if they go to go to a judge, like the judge could say, "Listen, this is not a pedophile. This is a young couple." But if the guy's 40 and the girl's 60, now you gotta turn right onto the A115 slip road. So it's interesting you say that because I got I got. I got into kind of a little bit of shit in my law school class when I was in law school. In 500 meters, continue on to A115. Talking about statutory rape. Um, and it, so statutory rape is a strict liability crime, basically. There's no excuse for it. She can have a fake ID. She can look 30 years old. Give you all the signals that she's of age. And if she's underage, you're fucked. Right. Regardless, right? Right, even if they lie. Yeah. And I didn't think that was fair, personally. Um, and I, I, there are very few people in my in my law school class who agreed with me with respect to that. I understand the base. I understand the reasoning behind it. But I mean, I didn't. continue on A one one five for twenty eight kilometers. That person's life is done, especially yeah. considering if, if, if and I, I've known of girls and women who have gone to great lengths to mask their age and to be deceptive about it and lie about it to people. And and if somebody succumbs to that, now not only do they go to jail, now they are sex offender for yes. the rest of their lives. Right? Well, to, to your point, I have a friend and his sister's friends, they're in California, mm -hmm. his sister's friends are 15 and he's got this giant issue because the 15-year-old friends are using fake IDs and going to L.A. clubs. Yeah. They're fucking sophomores in high school, and they're getting into L.A. clubs with fake IDs. And you wouldn't be able to tell. You cannot tell. When they're, they've hit puberty, and they're wearing makeup, and they're wearing sexy clothes, and they're going out. I'm sorry to say sexy, but 15. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Put off Stick with the stereotypical aspect yes. of understanding what sex exactly. like. Exactly. Yeah. Like that, and if you're a guy, and you don't know any better, it's, that's crazy. Yeah. And we're not even talking, like, they're 15, and they look 17. Right. They look like 25. <laughs> yeah. And it's so you, can, you know, you can be very deceptive as a young person if you're properly dressed and if you have good genetics. It's, you know. At the same time, I still understand the basis behind oh, yeah. the strict liability aspect of the law as well because it's like you're jump, you, you want to go above and beyond to protect you. 100%. Right? Yeah. So at, at the time, I guess I didn't articulate it the right way. Yeah. All I was saying was like, that doesn't seem fair. I understand it. Still, does. I wish that, like there needs to be some type of discernment given with respect to the context, the entire context of the situation. Well, there's some wild, unfair laws in California, and one of them has to do with whether or not you are the father of a child. <laughs> so, I know a guy, and uh, he unfortunately had a good friend who fucked his wife. And uh, he did not know this was happening. And this good friend got his wife pregnant, and he raised that kid as his daughter. And he didn't know it until after his friend was dead. His friend died. And then after his, after his friend was dead, he was stuck paying child support until that kid was 18, no matter what. Even though he got a paternity test, he was like, something's going on. Yeah. He got a paternity test, found out it was his friend's kid. Devastating, right? Your friend's dead. He was your best friend. Now he's dead, and you're raising his fucking kid, and you have to pay for it. So he 
he tried to appeal, no, fuck you, you have to pay. But anyway, listen, but part of me is also like, listen, you don't have to be a biological father to love a child. And I have a stepdaughter, I love her like my daughter. If I was in that situation, I would want to still pay for that girl. I wouldn't want to give any fucking money to that woman, though. Yeah. So if you have to give that woman money and then she distributes it, like, that's where it gets weird. Like, yeah. because it's up to their discretion. When you pay child support, oh, yeah, it goes straight to them. It goes to the mom. Yeah. The mom can buy shoes. Yeah. She can buy a purse. She doesn't have to do anything with the kid. Like, especially if she has a job already. So the idea is you're compensating her for the fact that you have a child together, but it's up to her discretion. If we're just going to be honest, it's, it, like child support, by and large, it's, it's, it's a business relationship between the mother, most times, between the mother and the state. Because it's not like the child support office doesn't take a portion of the money that's being paid. Right, right. So they, they're incentivized to have as many people on child support as possible, regardless of the context and the situation. So the state is not your friend in that respect. So understanding that, it just it just blows my mind um, that you can have a situation like that where he doesn't even have a choice in the matter. Right, right. Because there's some there are no there will be a good number of men who would say, you know what, I don't like it. I'm done fucking with you. Right. As far as the mother, but you know I still want to do what I can to help. Yes. The child. Um, but when you put him in a position where he doesn't even have a choice in the matter. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like just arbitrary idea that no, we set a million dollars for you to pay every month to this child. You can't pay for it. We're gonna throw you in jail because it's in the best interest of the child. Don't get me started on this. Don't, it's, don't it's, get me started well, on this, Joe. It's, okay. <laughs> it's like there's a lot of aspects of the law that were written in good faith. That like child support is one of them. Yeah. Like if you're a father, fuck yeah, you should pay for your kids, 100. percent But then when you get into situations like that, wait, wait a minute, how much? <sighs> A hundred thousand a month? That is, you don't need that. To Whatever it is. Like, that's crazy. You don't need that. Well, that's the weird thing about alimony as well. You have to maintain the lifestyle. So, like, someone becomes accustomed to a lifestyle. Like, say if you're married to Bill Gates. If you get divorced from Bill, say if you're only married to Bill for a year or two. If you get divorced, like, you're entitled to a large sum of money, unless there's some sort of prenuptial agreement, which yeah. I'm sure there is. But if you, there's not... You're accustomed to a lifestyle. She's used to caviar and private jets. Now you know why I live in Texas, bro. <laughs> it's a man state. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a great state yeah. in a lot of ways. And I was having the conversation with Ari today where I was trying to convince Ari to move here when we were at the range. With him. <laughs> but, uh, Wait, hold on. Was it really Ari's first time ever shooting? I don't know if he shot guns before. I don't know. Because I think that's, I think I remember him saying that. It seemed like it was yeah. his first day at first. And then you know, you're fucked up, dude. If that's his first time shooting and the first time he shoots is with staccatos, you're fucked up. Oh, yeah, I know, you're right? You're fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> you're so spoiled. You're so spoiled. Mm. That the smoothest shooting gun that's ever existed, if that's yeah. what you have. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's true. Yeah, yeah, Jamie's ruined. <laughs> you yeah. know, Jamie has a staccato. You have oh, a really? CS, right? You get it yet. You, oh, you can get it yet? What are you doing, Jamie? Oh, Jesus you Christ. Get you got to get on it, I thought you got one. Okay, listen. You, you can, you carry, you're today. carrying your little fanny pack. CS. You carry CS. Yeah. yeah. See, I carry CS. I'm carrying CS right now. CS is and, nice. Yeah. So and small and so light. It's, and yeah, it's amazing. And, and then it shoots so much bigger than oh, yeah. what it actually is. It's so flat. Yeah. And it, the, the recoil is so non existent. It's, it's so smooth in the I, hand. I love that. Yeah. Good. When we went to the factory today, so we should tell everybody, we went to the Staccato factory and we toured it for an hour. and I didn't even know we were going to tour the factory. I thought we were just going to go to the range. But yeah. They wanted to show. They're so proud of their manufacturing process. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They wanted to show. Yeah. It's, it's amazing See, how I, much effort is into each gun and how much engineering. The enthusiasm they had for you today is the same enthusiasm when they were in that little tiny spot. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I did the tour when they were at the older building. I did too. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I basically so, saw the same thing yeah. twice. Yeah. <laughs> but now I see the big version of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty fucking amazing. It is. It it's is. amazing. I, I I really genuinely love staccatos. That's yeah. Scary. Well, I love an engineering. Yeah. I love when someone just does something to the best they can do it. When they're explaining yeah. that it's 24 hours of work yeah. just to port one piece, just to, and and that they're they're literally down to the tolerance is one third of the width of a human hair. That's, crazy. That's their tolerance. Anything more than that, they throw it away. That's crazy. That's why. Brain can't even really battle that shit. And when you see yeah. all the c computer controlled machinery and all this. <laughs> Shit, yeah, this is this is the manufacturing. This is the old one. That's the that's the is it? Is it? Yeah, that's the old that's the old shop. I think it's the old shop. Yeah, what year is this? What year is this video from? Go oh. pull my video up. I did I did a video on it. Yeah. Um the, the uh I think the video I think put, put, put Cole on the that, part GT three. 
2,000 RP. In 300 meters, turn left onto Mickendorfer Chaussee, B2. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like an exotic. Turn left onto Mickendorfer Chaussee, B2. See it on the road? Let me see it driving. Give me some volume on this. Also, it has a it has a rear transaxle, so it's 50-50 weight distribution. Oh, that sounds beautiful. Don't tell me you wouldn't drive a silver car. Come on, bro. I would. I would just wrap it. I would just wrap it. it. Well, it was <laughs> I would just wrap it black. Listen. I love that car the way it is, but if that car was in matte black, it would be fucking sick. Matte black. I'm matte black. I'm matte black everything. Yeah, matte black. I'm nice. matte black everything. It's nice. It's the only color I like. Yeah, matte now, is... I do like white. I like white with black wheels. Did you matte black your Lamborghini? Oh, uh, not yet. It will. Be. Is it shiny right now? It's shiny right now. <sighs> Still not yeah. shiny. I probably Maybe won't have it. Time I probably city. won't have it longer than a year. Really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Just that's what I do. It. I have to get rid of it, and that's like basically drove it for free, and then get it up, get something else. But that's good too, so you don't, you don't experience the bullshit. Yeah, that's I didn't realize that. So like. Continue on B2 for seven kilometers. You always think like cars are just kind of like all, you know, depreciating assets. Not if you buy them right. Not the exotics. Yeah, not exotics. Yeah, yeah you like, actually make money if you yeah. buy Ferraris. Like, oh, that's not yours. Yeah, that's my, that's my turbo S. Yes. Oh, yeah. God that's, damn, that's before God. I wrapped it black. That's right like, now, right now it's gloss black. Yeah, yeah. But look at that thing. Yeah. Oh, my God. I just love the stands. The stands are so sick. Well, it's also as fast as you can get an internal combustion engine car. It's yeah. like basically electric car speed.
patch of ice, regular road, patch of ice, regular road. Uh-huh. No, this was that point now where it was like straight ice. Remember, they're not, they don't salt the back roads. Yeah. So driving and there's like this embankment. Like, yeah. And I'm like, as long as I go slow, I should be good. Keep in mind, I'm a novice at this. I've never driven in any in this can, this type of condition ever in my life, right? So I'm just thinking, you know, I have Range Rover for a drive, you know, I'm not realizing your tires are what matter at the time. And so at this point, you go on there and I can feel the car kind of shake a little bit. And I'm like, okay, that's not good. So just slow down a little bit. And just keep doing it, keeps doing it. And then it snaps. The car starts spinning on the embankment. So now we're heading straight into the ditch. So the truck is spinning. We're he- heading into the ditch. And we hit the ditch and I come in backwards. And then, so you, you know those moments when shit happens and you just kind of have to sit there for a second to take it in mm-hmm. and then figure out what the hell's going on? That's what happened. And in that time period, because in my mind, I'm like, how the fuck are we going to get out of this? This isn't like something right. I can drive you can out of. freeze to death out there. Exactly. Um, and so we're sitting in there, and I'm like, I don't know how we're going to get out of this. And before I can finish the thought and process it, I look to my right, and there's a big-ass tractor <laughs> coming down the road. And it was a guy who, who owned a farm who was basically sat there and saw what happened. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he was no, 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 no. He was coming to help us, to pull us uh, out. So he comes over, and he's like, looks like y'all are in a bit of a pickle. And I was like, yeah, something like that. And he goes, ain't this fancy truck four-wheel drive? <laughs> and I was like, uh, four-wheel drive with sport tires. Exactly. Yeah. You know, he was just giving me shit. Yeah. And so I was like, yeah. And he started laughing. He's like, I'll have you out in five minutes. So he hooked us up, pulled us out. He's like, stay at the very top, ride that, and you'd be good. So we did that. But the thing is, the ice was still there. So that three-hour trip took us 10 hours. Oh, my God. I literally, we, I think we did 10 miles an hour, 10 to 15 miles an hour the entire way. Like you didn't the gas, too. Exactly. And the funny thing is, I when we got back in us, I dropped my coworker off at his place. And then as I was pulling up to my building, my brakes went out. <laughs> In 600 meters, turn right onto Berliner Strass. Signs for Bielitz Nord. <laughs> just die? Just, yeah. I guess because I was riding them the entire way. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so I guess they were just like, we're done. Like, you know, I mean, when I tell you they couldn't have gone out at a more perfect time, I pulled into my building, got into my parking spot, and... Turn right onto Berliner Strass. Signs for Bielitz Nord. And as I was trying to pull into the parking spot, they get, they just went out. Now, I had enough friction to get it to slow down because I was at a slower speed. But at that point, it was... Continue on Berliner Strass for one and a half kilometers. We had to use the handbrake. Wow. Mach dich bereit für das Blockbuster Game des Jahres. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Ab dem 2. Februar. Brainiac hat die Justice League auf die dunkle Seite gezogen. Die Suicide Squad ist die letzte Hoffnung, um Metropolis zu retten. Spielt solo oder mit bis zu drei Freunden im Story- oder im actiongeladenen Squad-Modus. Jetzt für die PlayStation 5 vorbestellen, um das Spiel mit ultraschneller SSD, haptischem Feedback, adaptiven Trigger-Tasten und Tempest 3D Audio Tech zu genießen. This episode is brought to you by AG1. The supplement industry has gone crazy. And with so many powders and pills and vitamins, it's hard to know what's what. I get asked all the time what I would take if I could only take one supplement. And the answer is, hands down, AG1. AG1 is a daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. It's a science-driven mix that replaces all those multivitamins and probiotics with one simple drink. It's not some whole regimen that's overwhelming or confusing. Just a scoop in a glass of cold water every day and you're set. It could be easier to start. In 400 meters, turn right onto Verchaustrasse. Feeling better. I drink AG1 every day because it's a way to get the nutrition I need that my body can absorb and use effectively. I know you're going to love the way it makes you feel. Order now, and you'll get a free one year supply of immune supporting AG, vitamin D3, and K2. And turn right onto Verchaustrasse. Five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase at Drink A. In 600 meters, turn left. Head south on Berliner Strasse towards Clara Zetkin Strasse, B246. 
In 300 meters, turn right onto Clara Zetkin Strass, B246. G1.com slash Rogan. Start building your health foundation first with AG1. This video was a couple days ago. Turn right onto Clara Zetkin Strass, B246. No. On Icy Hill. Oh, no. Oh, oh I can see this here. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh shit, look at her smoking. Oh my god. Just smashed a car that locally. Head south on Berliner Strass towards Clara Zetkin Strass, B246, then turn right onto Clara Zetkin Strass. They hit a car? I just hit this parked car, that blue car right there. Oh, oh wow. Didn't hit anything else. It's a different bit of uh, angle. They got lucky. Yeah. Very lucky. Look at that thing spill. Dude, and there's nothing you can do. Nothing. Turn right onto Clara Zetkin Strass, B246. Nothing. When I was a kid, uh, I lived on a hill in uh, Newton, Massachusetts, and me and my uh, sister's boyfriend sat on the roof and watched people slide down our hill and crash. We called the cops. We said, hey, man, you should probably close the street down. down. Yeah. There was like five cars in a row oh, spun man. out, bounced off the curb. Continue on B246 for one kilometer. The ditches. We're just watching people try to come down the hill and yeah. just slide completely out of control. Dude, it's and that you, and you made a good point. It's when you're like now. I feel like I'm, you know, with all the traveling I do. You know, drive. We've drive, driven from Dallas to Utah to New Mexico. I've driven in ice. I've driven in snow. Yeah. So I'm pretty comfortable with it now. Even though I still don't really like it. There's nothing but you can do about ice, though. There's nothing. But there's also what you pointed out was other people. Yeah. So now that's what makes me nervous because I'm like. I remember when we had the uh, freeze apocalypse or whatever in Dallas. Yeah, I got in my truck and went out there and started kind of driving around because I kind of, you know, I kind of knew what I was doing. Yeah. But I was always, I was always constantly looking at my rear view mirror because I was like, there's going to be some dumbass who's going way too fast and doesn't realize that you can't stop at the same distance on ice patches and they're going to just right. ride near, right into me. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, this isn't fun anymore. So I just went back inside. But in Austin, they don't even have plows. They don't. They don't but have, now you said that shit. But that's crazy. Like, yeah. you should have a few. You, it, it seems like it happens. Look, let me tell you, that, that Texas arrogance, sometimes, 99% of the time, it's a great thing. There's that other 1% where it's like, yeah. all right, stop being stupid. I think it's a funding issue. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, they think yeah. they can't justify buying yeah, which, millions of dollars worth of snow plows yeah, for the true. city when it yeah. snows once every three years. But, I mean, it's also a one-time purchase. I mean, right. Main maintenance and keep up can't be that expensive for yeah. a snow plow. Well, I bet there were some conversations about it after the big freeze I'm a couple sure. of years yeah. ago. But yeah. I have that, that Land Cruiser. Mm -hmm. that, that thing was awesome yeah. during the snow. I was loving it. What kind of, do you have it's one a 1995. What kind of tires do you have on it? This is all, all oh, terrain. All terrain, okay. Yeah. Okay. So they're great. Right. You can drive over anything in those fuckers. Yeah, it look, it, I saw it when you pulled in. I was like, yep, looks about right. <laughs> yeah, I think so. In 400 meters, at the roundabout, take the third exit onto Bricker Strass, B246. A line is closed. Check conditions before you go. about living in LA. I'm like, if something happens, like an earthquake, fire, flood, I want to be able to go over these hills. I don't want to be stuck on these roads because yeah. there was a road in Northern California where there was a major fire and everyone on the road burned to death because the fire storm swept through the road and they were trapped in bumper to bumper traffic and they all got cooked. No. Yeah. Then that's another thing. That's another reason why I will always, always have a truck. With yeah. that, that has off-road capabilities. Yeah, well, that's the yeah. TRX, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. even though some people would argue that it's not an off-road truck. That motherfucker can go off-road. Yeah, road. I know. <laughs> I've driven, <laughs> I've driven it, I've taken mine yeah. off-road. I have the scratches on it, bitch, to prove it. Yeah, they can go yeah. off-road. Those things are capable. Yeah. It is kind of amazing, like, a, like a, a Raptor. That is essentially a Baja racing truck yeah. for the street. Pretty much. They, they have amazing travel in terms of, like, you can bounce on things, you can... <laughs> Go over it's to giant bumps. It's stupid. It's yeah. it, but it's the most giddy experience ever. You just yeah. sit and just, just this is how you this is how you drive it. 